copper is critical to the energy transition, including the manufacture of electric cars, wind turbines and solar panels. The need for responsibly produced Australian copper is clear. It's happening now at BHP. <laughs> Made of denim that moves with you. Made for messing around. Australian made furniture, made for you at Harvey Norman. Have it designed to suit your space. Australian made lounges built for family life with options in fabric, leather, size and shape. Australian made dining furniture, created to fit your space. Matching buffets, entertainment units and more to complete your look. Australian made quality and comfort at competitive prices with a range of options available. Support local manufacturers and choose Australian made furniture. Made for you. Now at Harvey Norman. No! Sunburnt country. A land of sweeping plains. Of ragged mountain ranges. Of drought and flooding rains. When the lucky country isn't so lucky. Lucky you're with Amy. Little thanks uh, for... Uh, they're more than Chicken McNuggets. They're team builders. Get more for your money at Macca's with 24 Chicken McNuggets for just $9.95. Better's March bonus cashback catalog is out now. Score a bonus cashback up to $300 on selected products across fridges, TVs, washers and much more. Plus you can buy now, pay later. Go local. That's better. This month we have unbelievable savings on our stylish range of shutters, all 50% off. And we also have 40% off zip screens, blinds, curtains, awnings and security screens. At Factory Direct, you get Lux for less. High Pro Premium, trusted quality and everyday essentials. Fuel their strength and vitality with nutritious meals. Elevate your livestock operations with the power of proper nutrition. High Pro, that's the goal. The Big Noise in Tools is Summerland Tool Supplies. No matter what trade you're in, you'll find the top power tool brands at great prices. Handyman or professional, get the job done fast with the right tool. Summerland Tool Supplies, 137 to 141 Johnson Street Casino. A century-old Aussie icon. It's Food Stars. Janine and I want all of you to make Americans love Vegemites. Who's daring ideas? Caramel and Vegemite Sunday. Wings and a Vegemite glaze. Impress the USA. Love the chicken wing. Can you taste the Vegemites? I love it. And send them into the semi-finals. Oh, Great job. Well done. Food stars. Tonight, 7.30. This program brought to you by Harvey Norman. For everything you need. Furniture, bedding, electrical and technology. It's an Olympic year, so, okay. France! Woo! Now let's run through fire! Australia versus the world. New Lego Masters. Start Sunday at 7 on 9 and 9 now. Tonight, Australia's Foreign Minister under fire over a controversial call she says could help end the war in Gaza. An alleged intruder dead and a grandfather rushed to hospital after a violent home invasion on the far north coast. The corruption watchdog drops in its investigation into sacked minister and Newcastle MP Tim Crackenthorpe. Customers evacuated and staff trapped as a torrent is unleashed at Tamworth Bunnings. And highly paid Manly star Josh Schuster told to look for a new club. This is NBN News with Gavin Morris and Natasha Beersdorf. Good evening. Penny Wong has been accused of taking a dangerous approach after the foreign minister suggested Australia could recognise Palestine before there's a two-state agreement with Israel. The stinging criticism came from the opposition in a rare rift with the government on foreign policy. 
Most of Israel's ground troops have been pulled out of southern Gaza, but still smoke rises from the enclave. Tonight, this conflict seemingly far from over. Troops stationed, tanks idle, a ground invasion of Rafah, Gaza's southernmost city, inevitable. There is no force in the world that will stop us, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says. Tonight, allies are trying. No, we do not have a, a date for any Rafah operation, at least one that's been communicated to us by the Israelis. And the situation is trying allies. The two-state solution is the only hope of breaking the endless cycle of violence. Foreign Minister Penny Wong suggesting recognition of Palestine as part of a two-state solution to prompt the peace. Israel remains adamant it should run any negotiations, not the rest of the world. But the normalisation agenda that was being pursued before October 7 cannot proceed without progress on Palestinian statehood. And that's completely the wrong approach to be taking at present. Indeed, it's a dangerous approach to be taking. Well, I think that the tragic death of the Australian aid worker has really given voice to Australian government's disquiet. Tonight, no time frame is given and Australia wants no power given to Hamas. I have been clear that Hamas has no role uh, in the future of Gaza. The first thing that must happen is that Hamas uh, must be removed. The decision like this by Australia will be seen, I believe, only as emboldening the terrorists. That accusation represents a rare rift between the major parties on foreign policy. Australia tonight attempting to corral a partner and a democracy in a region where both are scarce. At the White House, families of hostages still being held by Hamas called for their release and for peace. But we need results. We need our people home. One of the few comforts tonight, this, the largest airdrop of aid, coinciding with the end of Ramadan. Charles Croucher, NBN News. A man is dead and a grandfather has been brutally attacked with an axe in a violent home invasion at Kingscliff on the far north coast. Police say the 66-year-old defended himself as two intruders stormed his home. An alleged aggressive ambush turning deadly on Oxford Street. Two men accused of forcing their way into a Kingscliff home just after 8 last night. A 66-year-old grandfather inside finding himself face to face with an accused axe-wheeling intruder before being struck multiple times. He was suffering from a significant injury to his left arm which was partially severed. Officers say in self-defence Alan Kerr grabbed a knife fatally stabbing one of the men in the chest. Upon arrival they located a 29 year old male laying on the front veranda. At the time that male was wearing a face covering and was suffering from a stab wound to the chest. Surrounded by neighbours, Kerr was treated by paramedics taken to hospital in a serious condition. Whatever comes of it, you know, it's just so sad because he's got three beautiful kids and green kids, you know, and all that and his wife only died last year. Police tonight hunting the second intruder who remains on the run. I have very limited information on the second male. Forensics combing through evidence, seizing this silver sedan police believe is linked to the invasion as detectives investigate potential motives, including if drugs were involved. We will also be examining the circumstances surrounding the actions of the occupant and if his actions were... Um, were um, lawful and uh, reasonable in, in relation to the threat that was posed against him. Hataya Gripsky, NBN News. A man remains behind bars tonight after being charged over the death of 38-year-old Ash Morgan at Port Stephens. Mr Morgan was found with serious head wounds at Raymond Terrace early yesterday morning and died at the scene. Overnight, 29-year-old Kane Flanders was charged with murder. He faced Raymond Terrace local court today and didn't apply for bail. It's alleged both men were armed during an altercation, Mr Morgan with an axe and Flanders with a scooter. His case will be heard again in June. The corruption watchdog has dropped its investigation into sacked Newcastle Minister Tim Crackenthorpe. Reporter Tyson Cottrell joins us. Tyson, what did the Commission find? 
Gav ICAC issued a statement late this afternoon saying it's satisfied there are no reasonable prospects of finding Tim Crackenthorpe's conduct is corrupt and it's terminated its investigation. The Newcastle MP, he was sacked as a minister last August and referred to the commission for failing to disclose his family's property holdings in the Hunter, specifically a substantial portfolio in Broadmeadow owned by his wife and his father-in-law. It was later revealed Mr Crackenthorpe he'd held numerous meetings over plans for a multi-billion dollar development in the suburb that could have potentially benefited his family. A preliminary investigation by ICAC though it's resulted in a corruption probe being dropped. It's now up to the Premier to decide if the details of that report will be made public and Mr Crackenthorpe's future. Gav? Tyson, thanks for the update. A plainclothed police officer has been filmed punching a man who allegedly tried to get into a patrol car in the Northern Rivers. Officers were responding to an incident at Mwoolamba on Monday when a 50-year-old allegedly attempted to get into their sedan. He's been charged with assault, accused of grabbing the arm of an officer. Bunnings can be pretty hectic at the best of times, but chaos erupted at the one in Tamworth today after a forklift crashed into a fire hydrant. It unleashed a torrent of water, trapping a dozen workers and prompting a mass evacuation. Not your usual sight outside Bunnings. And when a forklift hit a fire hydrant this morning, this gusher was just the beginning. Part of the roof caved in and a door couldn't be opened, leaving staff members stuck. Twelve workers in the store were trapped in the upstairs office area and they were trapped due to the volume of water which was causing them not to be able to get out and the doors were, were sealed. Emergency services were called at around 10am. Fire and rescue and SES crews working swiftly to turn off the water supply and safely release the trapped workers. With the water, some of the roofing in the office area had come down and those people couldn't be released until that area was secured. Customers were forced into the car park where a sea of green and red also came together. A little shaken up, but otherwise OK. There were about 100 workers in the store, uh, an unknown number of members of the public, but everyone's been evacuated. And thankfully, no one was injured. The store is now closed, with Bunnings telling NBN News staff and emergency services are working as hard as they can on reopening, quickly and safely. So Bunnings staff will have to go through and make an assessment of what damage has been caused and also to the roof and whatever goods were on ground level. Georgia Vaughan, NBN News. Police were appealing for information over an alleged armed robbery at Kyogle Chemist yesterday. They say a man entered a Sol Patterson pharmacy on Summerland Way around 1pm, where it's alleged he threatened staff with a knife and fled with stolen items. Thankfully, no one was injured. The man is described as being of Caucasian appearance, around 177 centimetres tall and believed to be aged in his 40s. The Prime Minister has met with Northern Rivers families to discuss changes to paid parental leave. He also attended the opening of a business which employs disadvantaged locals. Connecting with communities beyond the capital. Are you going to share your biscuit with, the, with Mr Prime Minister? <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Albanese meeting with the parenthood community in Ballina to discuss changes to paid parental leave. That We've legislated for that six months of paid parental leave for either parent uh, to engage with. Paid parental leave goes to the heart of valuing the incredible work that parents do when they are caring. Passing the Senate last month, the scheme is set to be in full effect by 2026. This is my second baby, so it means I've been able to have longer off work, which is um, really essential because childcare is really hard to get into in this region. The system before was quite inadequate. 18 weeks um, at minimum wage was really not sufficient. The federal government also introducing superannuation payments during parental leave starting from July next year. So paying super to super mums will make an enormous difference. These reforms aim to bridge superannuation disparity for women taking parental leave. As it stands, women are left up to 25% worse off in retirement than men. It's just so important for women's financial independence later in life. Albo also making a trip to Bangalore for the official opening of Beacon Laundry. This is as good 
a local event that I have been to as Prime Minister, uh, just to see those beaming faces. Providing high-end laundry services to hospitality businesses. The $12 million social enterprise offers a fresh start to those who need it most. Beacon Laundry employs people from a range of different backgrounds. A lived experience of mental illness, people experiencing homelessness, um, experiencing drug and alcohol misuse, all of those sorts of different things. I've been able to look after my health and my well-being. I've got stable accommodation. Andrew Jew, NBN News. Police are on the hunt for this man following a vehicle theft at Tweed Heads on Sunday. Officers allege he stole keys from a lock box on Coral Street before driving off in a white Toyota Prado. The car was later found abandoned at a shopping centre on Francis Street. Australia's first state-funded endometriosis clinic has opened on the Gold Coast. The health centre now supporting hundreds of women. A lifetime of silent suffering. People thinking that it's all in our head. That's the reality for Michaela Roger, diagnosed with endometriosis after three decades of extreme pain. Her scarring so severe, she needed colorectal surgery. That I had to get up and go to work every day um, and live and breathe endometriosis where my body was physically shutting down. On average, it takes seven years to diagnose. Now, a welcome boost. One of Australia's first endometriosis and pelvic pain clinics opening in Rabina and Varsity Lakes to speed up that process. This is an exciting time for women whose pain for many years has been dismissed. We recognise that no one person has the same symptoms. Six endosurgeons working alongside physios and dietitians, benefiting 1,000 patients every year. Queensland women have one of the highest rates of endometriosis in the country, with around one in six women diagnosed by the time they're 40. With this new clinic, women could be seeing a specialist within a month. And to have people that listen to them and understand what they're going through, um, you know, is really good for women. Bella Schwarzenegger, NBN News. Noel Davis has been chipping away on a milestone project. The Tweed Heads local restoring one of Australia's most iconic race cars. The 1980s Wheatbix Commodore, driven by the late Peter Brock. It's Noel Davis's favourite sound. Now his passion for cars has reached fever pitch. The 68-year-old successfully restoring this 1980s Brock Group C Commodore. It was just always in the back of my mind. I'd really love to restore this car back to the original era. Um, I knew Peter really well. Driven by the late Peter Brock, a multi-award winning race car driver, the historic car is somewhat of an Aussie icon itself, appearing in the Vita Brit Wheatbix ad in the 1980s. So for Davis, a long-time racer, it was no-brainer to buy the original car as soon as it hit the market. When I rang up on Sunday afternoon, drove down to Larry Perkins' workshop where it was stored, made the purchase and brought it back home. Davis owned and raced in the original car for eight years before opting to sell it in 1991. It was later involved in a crash and written off. But Davis, still attached to the car, bought the remaining parts and in 2020 built a replica in his garage. The bonnet and that I got the uh, measurements off for the stripes. Although I had plenty of photos to go off anyway. Carefully detailed down to the millimetre and fit with a super V8 engine, a four-year labour of love has paid off for Noel, who was diagnosed with terminal cancer in 2013. 10 o'clock at night, if I wasn't tired, I'd get out of bed and just go in the garage and tinker for half an hour, an hour, it didn't matter. It just took the mind off the pain. As for his plans for the car... Potential to sell it would be, you know, an eye-opener for me, I suppose, to the right person. But at the moment, I, I'm just happy to keep it in the, keep it there. They can bury it with me. <laughs> Alexandra Rees, NBN News. Well, much cooler throughout this morning during the day, though. Stack of sunshine helping to warm the situation up to about 26, 27 degrees locally. Next, charges dropped. A legal win for the younger brother of NRL star Payne Huss. The Treasurer announces the biggest competition shake-up in 50 years in a bid to lower prices. And the runaway racehorse that headed straight for a different kind of track. Sweet shoes. Want them? Try the Google app for iPhone. Tap this. Snap that. What a vibe. 
can't name that song? Tap this, hum that. Right, wait. Tap this, hover over that. And now you know. Find it, hum it, translate it. More ways to search. Download the Google app for iPhone. NRL star Payne Haas. 19-year-old Zeta Haas today had all drugs charges against him withdrawn. Haas was a passenger in a car when he and another man were arrested near Newcastle last August. At the time, police alleged the pair had made a trip to Queensland to collect a 1.8 kilogram package, which they believed to contain ice. Huss was granted bail last September after a Supreme Court judge described the case against him as extremely weak. Disgraced former Dean of Newcastle and convicted sex offender Graham Lawrence will be banned from entering any Anglican church grounds when he's released on parole next week. The Anglican Diocese of Newcastle today confirmed the 82-year-old is also prohibited from taking part in activities or events associated with the church. As NBN News revealed yesterday, Lawrence has been granted strict parole after serving four and a half years in jail for raping a teenage boy in 1991. The ACCC will have greater powers to intervene in company mergers and takeovers under changes announced by the Treasurer. It's a major overhaul of competition rules designed to help reduce prices for consumers. Jim Chalmers has placed himself squarely in the path of big business. Australia's approach to mergers is no longer fit for purpose. The ACCC asked for more power and it's getting it. The Treasurer announcing the biggest competition shake-up in 50 years. New rules designed to tackle market concentration where a few dominant players in sectors like banking, groceries, telecommunications, airlines and energy wield too much power 
and got it by buying out the competition. Most mergers have genuine economic benefits. We acknowledge that. But some mergers can cause serious economic harm when they're solely focused on squeezing out competitors to ensure a bigger percentage of the market. Under the new rules, the bar would be raised for big companies. In order to buy or merge with a rival, they would have to apply to the ACCC first, convince the regulator the deal would not lessen competition, as the ACCC say are much needed. Stronger competition is important. It brings more choice, higher quality and lower prices for us all. The government will now get to work on the details of the plan, including how big a takeover will have to be before it faces these new rules. If it all passes through Parliament, then the changes will come into effect January 1, 2026. Chris Kohler, NBN News. Foreigners could soon face higher taxes when buying property in New South Wales. Overseas investors already pay an extra 8%, but a hike is being considered as the state government looks at ways to tackle the housing crisis. We need to investigate all measures to boost housing supply and a, a give opportunities to young people in particular to have a place to live in, a, in New South Wales and in Sydney, which is one of the most expensive cities on earth. The foreign investor surcharge was introduced in 2016 and has raised $2.65 billion so far. It's the last thing you'd expect to see while waiting for a train, a commuter with four legs and a long face. But that's precisely what came trotting onto a station platform near Sydney's Warwick Farm racecourse. It's an unfamiliar looking track and not even a real farm. Passengers at Warwick Farm train station with an even better reason to keep back as this accidental first time commuter checked out modern transportation. This was actually a well behaved passenger if not a uh, unexpected one. Dressed appropriately for the rainy night, the horse wandered onto platform one just before midnight on Friday. Never in a million years would I expect to see that. I want to know where he was going. Was he planning to go down to the city circle, you know, Redfern? The blue grip strip offering these hooves some traction, a sensory overload with every step. An approaching train, surely the main event. Thankfully, we're able to warn our train drivers uh, to take extra care, to look out for animals on the tracks. The train stopped at the station. It didn't open the doors, but um, we were able to catch the horse uh, not too long after that. Not before a quick game of chasey with this frightened man. It's uh, really, really bizarre, like something you don't, that doesn't cross your mind. The end of an adventure, reason enough for the long face back onto the horse float and leaving quite the tale to tell. It's unclear how exactly the horse Houdini'd from its stables nearby, but we're told it's now safely back where it should be and is a little more street smart. An escapee with now a new take on unbridled joy. Hayley Francis, NBN News. Escaping the cold, I'm sure. Yes, a burst of cold southerly winds has now made its way right across the region. The offshore low is spiralling away from the coast, generating a large swell, which peaked offshore over eight metres. The surge of cold autumn air is rotating around the high, spilling across the northwest, and that is triggering temperatures to plummet tonight. Most inland locations will begin tomorrow in the single digits. Coastal communities are going to also feel the chill. Plenty of sun, though, will Warm the day into the mid to low 20s for most. Next, another industrial battle on the horizon as the New South Wales Premier defends major school funding cuts. A marathon operation to save more than 50 people from a stranded bus. And a hunter connection as an Aussie favourite returns with a twist. <laughs> At Tarpa Call, we can help turn your renovation dreams into reality. Transform your home with our hard-wearing hybrid and timber flooring, available in a huge range of styles and colours. Your floor can go from this to this. Then enhance your new look with our fashionable rugs and new Australian-made curtains and blinds. When it's time to create your dream space, you know who to call. Call, call, Tarpa Call. The experts in the trade. Sweet shoes. Want them? Try the Google app for iPhone. Tap this. Snap that. What a vibe. Can't name that song? Tap this. Hum that. Right. Wait. Tap this. Hover over that. And now you know. Find it. Hum it. 
Translate it. More ways to search. Download the Google app for iPhone. Samsung 2024 TV range out now at Harvey Norman. Get up to 15% of the TV value back in gift cards when you buy with any Samsung soundbar. Shop the latest 65-inch frame QLED TV with up to 15% of the TV value back in gift cards when you buy with any Samsung soundbar. Experience the new Samsung OLED TV with up to 15% back in gift cards when you buy with any Samsung soundbar. The new Samsung TV range now at Harvey Norman. I was just doing my home loan. Did I die? Just on the inside. Hello. Did you know there's a new way to home loan? Compare the market makes it faster and has a simple online application without endless paperwork. And it's on your smartphone. Wow. It's a miracle. It is if you need a home loan. Compare the market home loans. From comparing to settlement, it's home loan heaven. Simple. Half House Hill. Half gone, but this half still here. The family standing its ground against a developer. Price is no good. Yeah, personally. How long can they hang on? Half my ass. It's good. So much for downsizing. But they're taking the other half. <laughs> a current affair tonight. With Sustain Complete, your dry eyes won't hold you back. Sustain Complete. All in one relief for all types of irritated, tired, dry eyes. Sustain Complete. Two drops, one focused you. Now preservative free. All to new. Call Roof Tech now for a free, no obligation quote on double six eight one one seven nine three. Roof Tech. We do everything roofing. Tripper Deal's biggest offer ever is back. Earn 10,000 bonus Qantas points when you book any deal 999 or more by the 15th of April. Head to tripperdeal.com.au. You're watching NBN News. These are our top local stories. A man is dead and a grandfather has been brutally attacked with an axe in a violent home invasion at Kingscliff on the far north coast. ICAC has dropped an investigation into sacked Newcastle Minister Tim Crackenthorpe. The MP was referred to the Commission last August for failing to disclose his family's property holdings. There was a snag of a different kind at Tamworth's Bunnings today, with staff and customers evacuated after a forklift crashed into a fire hydrant, unleashing a torrent of water. Pressure is mounting on the New South Wales Government to commence work on a promised koala protection zone on the mid-north coast. It comes amid a new report which claims the government's desire to sell carbon offsets is partly to blame for the delay. And Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has visited the Northern Rivers, speaking with families about changes to paid parental leave. A 29-year-old will stand trial over the death of a man at a Hunter train station. Matthew Breckenridge today pleaded not guilty to murdering Scott Parrott at Beresfield in December 2022. He's accused of beating him to death, then jumping on a passenger train in an attempt to flee. Breckenridge will now face a Supreme Court trial, which is expected to centre around his mental state at the time. The trial date will be set in June. The New South Wales government is facing yet another industrial battle with a key union as major school funding cuts leave classroom support jobs in jeopardy. But the Premier is defending the decision which will impact education resources, saying his priority is increasing teacher wages. The Education Minister taking a red pen to school spending. We are reining in the discretionary funding. The budget bombshell dropped in a letter in the final week of Term 1. Across the state, $148 million is being slashed from schools. Some principals complaining they've lost up to $150,000 in one hit. They're now left looking at what to cut. They may be forced to make decisions about school programs, school excursions, and the fact that that the New South Wales Labor government are doing that to our principals is nothing short of a disgrace. The department blames falling enrolments, which has impacted funding from Canberra, the government desperate to defend its own spending choices. Our priority 
is to put money into wages and conditions. Six months ago, teachers were handed a $10,000 a year pay rise, a multi-billion dollar hit to the education budget. Today, principals had their resources cut. This adjustment has nothing to do with a teacher pay rise. This has has nothing nothing to do do with a teacher pay pay rise. The Premier has made public education a top priority, so the cuts not only open him up to opposition criticism, but also put him on a collision course with his own powerful union allies. Fears school support, staff learning aids and admin teams will be let go. Schools need to find the money to uh, keep these people on the payroll. We need an unequivocal guarantee that no jobs will be cut and that no jobs are at risk. As the school term wraps up, uncertainty over what students will return to. In Milpera, Liz Daniels, NBN News. One week on and we've been given a new insight into the terror of Taiwan's worst earthquake in 25 years. New dash cam footage has been released from multiple cars showing drivers caught up in severe rock slides. This vehicle was just reaching a tunnel when it was surrounded by debris. hit area on the island's east coast. 51 passengers have been saved in a nearly 10-hour operation after a bus became stuck in flood water in Kenya. The driver had attempted to cross a flooded section of road. Some passengers escaped through the windows, but others remained on the roof overnight until help arrived. Fresh accusations have been levelled against Alec Baldwin following the death of a cinematographer during the filming of the movie Rust. Documents now made public reveal US prosecutors plan to argue the 66-year-old was unable to control his emotions and his frequent shouting and swearing led to safety compromises on set. The actor will face trial in July charged with involuntary manslaughter. Tributes flow today after the death of UK scientist Peter Higgs. He changed changed our understanding of the universe when he predicted the existence of a new particle in 1964. That theory was proven in 2012 with the discovery of the so-called God particle, officially known as the Higgs boson, which explains how particles get their mass. Peter Higgs died peacefully at home, age 94. They say cash is king, and that's certainly now the case in the UK. King Charles has been presented with the first banknotes featuring his portrait. It's quite a big moment because we've never changed the sovereign on the banknotes because the Queen was the first sovereign to be on the banknotes. They're very elegant, these ones, I must say. They're very well designed, I must say. The notes will be released to the public in early June. The Australian share market pushed higher today with gold setting a new record. But the big news lies ahead. US inflation figures could hold the key to interest rate cuts. Here's finance editor Chris Kohler. Global markets will be watching closely tonight for signs the United States battle with inflation is being won. If it is, and the rate comes down like it's expected to, interest rate cuts become more of a sure thing, helping share markets all over the world, including ours. With that in mind, the ASX rose a little today, with mining companies among the best, while some of the banks took a backward step. And the Australian dollar ticked higher, buying 66 US cents and popping back above 61 euro cents. Health experts have accused Coca-Cola of secretly increasing Fanta's sugar content by a hefty 60%. It's claimed the sugar taken out of the soft drink several years ago in the middle of a national sugar tax debate has been quietly added back in. One of Australia's oldest and most iconic chocolates is returning to supermarket shelves after a long wait. But the poly waffle is being brought back in a very different form. And a Hunter food reviewer has been one of the first to try it. If you really love your chocolate, chances are you've heard of this. Get into a new taste, get into a new poly waffle. And for the first time in 15 years... That'll be available on uh, supermarket and customer shelves from this Friday the 12th of April. Well-known Hunter Food reviewer Russell Stewart managed to get a sneak preview, taking to social media today, sharing some very honest thoughts with hundreds of thousands of his Russ Eats followers on the now bite-sized marshmallow wafer chocolate combination. That marshmallow is honestly the perfect texture. They're definitely up there. I've got them up there with um, pods and Maltesers, to be honest. 
First made in 1947, the nostalgic chocolate was a hit among sweet tooths for years. Generations of Australians have grown up with polywaffle. But it was discontinued in 2009 due to production costs and issues with standing shelf life. Bought by South Australian chocolate company Robin Menz in 2019, consumers have been holding out for its release ever since. The revamped version getting mixed reviews. It's good we've got the polywaffle bites, but there's a lot of people that have now found out we're not getting the polywaffle bar back. Renewed hope still that the polywaffle redux is the first of many. I'm just wondering what they're going to, what men's will bring back next. No one wants to let go of the chockies, so whenever they're they're gone, people are always screaming for them back. But they need to buy them to keep them on the shelves. Is kind of the key. Lauren Kemp, MBN News. <laughs> yes or no? I can't can't wait. Yeah, 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 definitely. All right, okay. That's good news. Let's move to sport now with Soph. I'll keep him afloat, don't worry. <laughs> so it appears we've seen the last of Josh Schuster in a Seagulls jersey. Well, Manly has told him he can find another club. After the break, we'll hear why, even if he does leave, it could prove costly for the Seagulls. Also ahead, the Knights not focusing on the Roosters' woes ahead of tomorrow's clash and Australia's Jason Day in good company at the Masters. You can have what you crave at the Crave Club. Fiber 190 calorie. Have what you crave. Fry Hungry Jack's new Bourbon Street Whopper with crispy onion rings and bourbon barbecue sauce. Or fall in love with Bourbon Street Jack's Fried Chicken. New Bourbon Street Jack's Fried Chicken and Whopper. The burgers are better at Hungry Jack's. The Big Mac is the original mouthful. A one of a kind flavor that now comes in three sizes. Sensitive skin like yours deserves Venus. Baby, she's... Check out the skin cushion with a touch of aloe for Glide. Your skin will feel as smooth as a buttered dolphin. See you later, irritation. So smooth. <laughs> Now is the time to book your all-inclusive voyage to Antarctica on Scenic Eclipse. For memories that last a lifetime. Book now and save from $4,500 per person. With a smart new digital process and expert local support when you need it, we've made refinancing your home loan not hard. And with $3,000 cash back when you refinance online, that's not bad. Newcastle Permanent, here for good. Hi, I'm Pete, golf professional and owner of Pete's Golf Warehouse. Custom fitted clubs in store. Have your grips fitted while you wait. The complete golf store with old fashioned service. Pete's Golf Warehouse, Tweed Head South, directly behind Harvey Norman. At Coles, our experts go to great lengths for quality. Here, there, everywhere. It's why our Aussie grazed cattle and lamb roam free in open pastures. Ladies and gentlemen, your grass is served. And it's why we taste test all our Coles own brand products again. More chocolate. And again. Less chocolate. And again. Perfect. Because when you go to Great Lengths, you get great quality food. Mm. Great Lengths for quality. That's Coles. Josh Houston may have played his final match for Manly with the promising back rower today given permission to look for a new club. It comes less than a year after he signed a $2.4 million contract extension. First benched, now Josh Schuster has been told he can leave. We haven't been told anything. We've only seen what everyone else has seen on Instagram and all that sort of stuff. Um, Obviously, what's going on behind the scenes is above my pay grade. On June 29 last year, Schuster signed a three-year extension with the Seagulls. Nine months on, the 22-year-old's career is at a major crossroad. There's a lot of sliding doors moments for a lot of people, and you just want, you just hope that 
when it gets to that situation that people are um, willing and ready to take that opportunity. Chicken pox and finger and calf injuries have halted the back roller's ability to force his way back into first grade. So far this season, Schuster has been left languishing in New South Wales Cup. Do you think he still has what it takes to make it in the NRL? Oh, for sure. Um, I think he's had a tough pre-season, um, a lot of injuries and setbacks, but he, he still works very hard. But, uh, yeah, it's too early days for him. Wherever he ends up, or whether it's here or somewhere else, it's um, we just want the best for him. Even if Schuster finds a new club, they're unlikely to pay all of his big money deal, so he'll continue to cost Manly plenty until his current contract expires at the end of 2027. No one's given Josh the money that he's on at Manly. He has the potential to be a really good player. He just hasn't shown up enough clubs consistently. There'll be interest because you know what he can do? He can set up tries. Not everyone can set up tries. In Brookvale, Zach Bailey, NBN News. A decent win over the Roosters tomorrow night could take Newcastle into the top eight. The Tricolours are missing some key players, but the Knights coach is more focused on filling personnel gaps of his own. Three games in 11 days. It's a busy time for the Knights. We haven't uh, worked on it too much. We've front-loaded our recovery and get the boys' tanks filled up, which very pleasingly, um, judging by yesterday's training session, they were very good. The injury plagued Jaden Braley made it through the Dragons match unscathed. His experience on the field essential in Adam O'Brien's eyes. Whilst Frizz is not playing, I think having Jaden out there in the front line line as co-captain helps with you know some of the stuff that Kayla misses being so far away from the action. Frizzell's shoes are being filled by Dylan Lucas as he recovers from a hamstring complaint and the 2023 Rookie of the Year continues to impress. Dylan Lucas came in and played unreal so I've sort of been um, our minds are the last couple of years next man up mentality and uh, I think Greg's there or thereabouts. The Roosters will be lacking some star power with James Tedesco and former Knight Dom Young out of the picture. The winger serving a two game suspension for a high tackle. Maybe some of our players might have looked forward to you know, playing him in the game and then catching up with him afterwards. But, yeah, it's not something that I consume myself with. I just worry about preparing our team to play theirs. Our coverage of tomorrow night's Roosters Newcastle Clash kicks off at 7.30. Rabbitohs hooker Damien Cook has vented his frustration after being dropped by under-fire coach Jason Demetrio for South Sydney's season-defining showdown with the Sharks. Of course I'm angry. Um, frustrated, angry, sad, all the emotions, I guess, yesterday. Um, you know, because I do want to be out there on the field uh, and give my best to my team uh, to try and get, get us out of where we are. In a shock development, Kangaroos coach Mal Meninga is a leading candidate to take over as interim coach if Demetrio is let go. The build-up to the Masters has been far from ideal for some of the Australian contingent. Cam Smith is recovering from illness and Min Woo Lee has a broken finger. But Jason Day is in high spirits after being paired with Tiger Woods for the opening two rounds. Four Australians on golf's biggest stage. At Augusta's Amen Corner, a picture-perfect moment for Cameron Smith, Adam Scott, Jason Day and Minwoo Lee. It's nice to, you know, be bunched up and uh, have, uh, I guess, be a bit more comfortable. A practice round, also a chance for fun and frivolity. Unconventional golf, but traditional on the 16th during a Masters practice round. <laughs> It was Jason's caddy, Luke. Um, yeah, it was probably one of the funniest things I've ever seen. But for 25-year-old Minwoo Lee, a gym accident last week is no laughing matter. Threw the dumbbell down and somehow clipped my right ring finger. He broke it. So it wasn't the best prep. And I got the flu two days ago, so it's, yeah, it's going great. <laughs> Cameron Smith is fighting an illness. Today's probably the first day where I feel like I've got a little bit of energy. I'm, I'm sure I'll be pretty cooked tonight. And at his 13th Masters... Jason Day found out he will tee off alongside Tiger Woods. What are you talking about? We were playing with Tiger the first couple of rounds. For me? Yeah. yeah. You and Max yeah. and Tiger. Did you really? Know, I didn't know. No. Yeah, as long as I beat that old man, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> the 48-year-old five-time champion still excites the crowds, but he faces an uphill battle after ankle surgery last year. 
This would be Tiger's 26th Masters. Only one other player, Jack Nicholas, has won this tournament more times than him. The question this week remains, can Tiger rule once more at Augusta? If everything comes together, I think I can get one more. Tonight, joining other past champions, hoping he can beat the odds for another green jacket. At the Masters, Jonathan Kersley, NBN News. Next, a new look lineup, but two familiar faces do the damage as the Matildas take down Mexico and football super clubs deliver a Champions League classic. If you love your footy, we've got something for you. Alongside Lee Matthews and Jimmy Bartell, we present Footy Furnace, a brand new show wrapping up every match, every team, every Sunday night. The best analysis, the best opinion, all the big highlights, all the big news stories, wrapping up a huge weekend of footy. That's Footy Furnace on 9 and 9 now. class for you and every passenger. Where'd you like to be dropped off, Laura? A walkway. 2024 Hyundai Palisade Calligraphy. Going too fast and not paying attention to your surroundings is dangerous for everyone on our roads. So drive slowly around roadworks in New South Wales. And look after the people who are making our roads safer. Slow down. Road workers around. Your local vendor are your appliance specialists with everything from fridges and laundry to TV, small appliances and much more. Plus, with a range of payment options available, you can buy now and pay later. Go local. That's better. It's OMF Stock Tank Sale. Get up to 53% off selected mattresses. Plus, get up to 20% off selected bedroom furniture. And up to 50 months interest free. OMF Stock Tank Sale. And Sunday. Batteries, smoke detectors, cooking oils, light bulbs and more can be recycled at your local CRC for free. Find yours today. Join us at Byron and Bangalow Farmers Markets where you'll find the freshest produce straight from our local farmers every Thursday morning in Byron Bay and every Saturday morning in Bangalow. Let Aussie Digger reignite your camping adventures with Austrail, Outdoor Connection, Caribbean, Black Wolf, Coleman, Wild Track, Campfire Companion and lots more. All your camping needs in one single location. Aussie Digger, shop in store or online. What happened to you, mate, if you get us into members? Hello! Come with me! The Lap Road Racing Club is giving you the ownership experience. Follow a stable of over 30 runners with updates from leading jockeys and trainers. Be part of the excitement as our runners hit the track. Ready to feel like an owner? Join the Lap Road Racing Club today. It's fast and easy. You win some, you lose more. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website. This report brought to you by Ladbrokes. Take on the fun and Ladbroke it. You win some, you lose more. Another promising performance from the Matildas on the long road to the Olympics. The Aussies comfortably beating Mexico 2-0 in Texas. In yet another new look lineup due to injury, the experienced duo of Hayley Rasso and Caitlin Ford was clinical, both scoring. Next up for the Tillies, two friendlies against China. Manchester City and Real Madrid dished up a classic Champions League quarter-final this morning. City opened the scoring inside two minutes in a match that featured six goals and four lead changes. The reigning champions bagged three stunners, but they had to settle for a three-all draw when Madrid drew level with an epic volley in the 79th minute. Meanwhile, Arsenal and Bayern Munich also head into their second leg locked up after a two-all draw at the end. Sopping footy boots for runners at training today, Kieran Foran and Jaden Campbell are taking a cautious approach as they nurse niggling ankle injuries. While the pair are racing the clock to face the Raiders on Sunday, there's no signs of concerns from their teammates. 
Time is ticking on the Titans' season, but not for Jaden Campbell and Kieran Foran to prove their fitness. The duo away from the main group, but for those in it, no worries. I think they'll be all right. They'll be sweet to go. So if Foz is bloody, that man's made a concrete or steel or something. Sunday's opponents wary of Gold Coast clicking into gear. A former Titan, now Raider, with no qualms talking up his old team. They're probably one of the most dangerous teams in the comp on their day. Obviously, got a good forward pack. They got fast outside backs. And if you turn the ball over a lot and, and give them a lot of ball, they're going to make you pay. But right now, they're dropping the ball. It's frustrating, obviously, where we sit, but... Um, the only people that can get out of it is ourselves. The obvious blueprint mirroring the attacking football played in the second half against the Cowboys. We've got enough strike in our team to, to attack other teams, so just to let the brakes off and enjoy our footy again. It's never been a problem here at the Titans. Like we... I don't write songs to be famous. I write songs because... I don't know what I'd do if I didn't... To live my song. Here he is, little Logan. You wouldn't guess he's had an earache an hour ago, would you? A quick trip to the doctor and a dose of children's Panadol. Now look at him. Watch out, Mum. Go, Logan. Help them back to their awesome best with children's Panadol. So much for downsizing that they're taking the other half. <laughs> A current affair tonight. So, you want to make an entrance? It's important to move with purpose. Take in your surroundings. Signal your intention. And enter with poise. Because how you arrive leaves a lasting impression. Arrive in the first ever Lexus LBX. TimberTech, creating lifestyle. Hi, I'm Pete, golf professional and owner of Pete's Golf Warehouse. Custom fitted clubs in store. Have your grips fitted while you wait. The complete golf store with old fashioned service. Pete's Golf Warehouse, Tweed Head South, directly behind Harvey Norman. Finding your dream home can be a challenge, but organising your finance needn't be. With competitive rates and fast local approvals, Summerland Bank can make it easy. Drop into your local branch or visit summerland.com.au to find out more. Southwesterly winds moving in and a new swell has been running up the coast as well. This is a great show. I like this because sand, due to the air or water moving over, it can replicate the clouds above. And you've got a little bit of a reflection happening here almost. Great shot from Tracy. Thank you for sending that one in. Now, the past 24 hours, we had the wet weather mostly affect the southern half of the New South Wales coast. And then that rain band moved offshore, joining the low, which is quite intense, pulling away from the coast but strong enough to throw a burst of cold polar winds our way right across the northern interior of New South Wales and Queensland. So temperatures are going to plummet again tonight. It's going to be very, very cold, particularly inland throughout the valleys because it's a very clear sky across the majority of the nation. And with this setup, we see very big temperature swings because temperatures plummet at night, but then it warms during the day. The southerly winds remaining in place, the low pulling away, but still generating
generating swell. Wind slowing down a little bit there for us, but it is overall going to be cold, but lovely during the day because we get the sunshine and we've got that classic autumn weather with us. So Brisbane warming to 27, but big temperature drop there for Brisbane. And they'll be enjoying that after what was an incredibly and exceptionally humid summer and it really lingered there into autumn and they've had a mixture of cloud and rain. So the drier, cooler autumn air is certainly welcome, allowing for the sunshine to warm the day. But still fairly cool right throughout the south east, uh, down to just three degrees for the capital. Uh, cold, single digits for the Alice and beautiful in the west and not half bad throughout the northern tropics. Uh, locally, we had 26, 27 degrees at Casino, 26 to 27s locally. Uh, but uh, noticeably cooler this morning, down to about uh, 13, 15 degrees. Look at the cold air tomorrow morning. The cold southwesterly winds wanting to hold for most of the day, trying to get around to the south there towards the end of the day at best. But generally, it's a cold, dry, southwesterly right across the region, making for a classic autumn day for us. So generally, it's going to be fine. Just cold tomorrow morning, down to five degrees up on the ranges. Uh, may go down to the single digits, certainly going to be close around Casino, Lismore. It'll feel like it's going to be cold tomorrow morning. But then we've got the sunshine warming the day towards the mid-20s. Cape Byron may see a little shower skimmed through, but generally, look, it's fine for all tomorrow. There's the swell reaching us, a lot of it buzzing by offshore, but we'll be seeing some of that get in uh, to our beaches there. Strong wind warning remaining in place, but that will settle. Sun's rise at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. It'll be cold just after sunrise, especially. Working to the high tide at 10, the bigger tide is tonight. We may see some coastal erosion. We've already witnessed some of that. Chilly nights uh, and mornings. Then consistently, 26s, partly cloudy skies, and the occasional shower brushing by, pushing through there over the weekend. And into next week, we may have another wet weather uh, system affect us during the middle of next week. We'll wait and see on that one. But until then, it's about the partly cloudy skies and the occasional shower from Friday onwards. But generally fine. It's, it's okay. It's looking pretty good as we move through the weekend. The uh, risk of receiving a shower is very much on the small side. Checking in with the beaches, well, protected beaches were your only hope, like Flynn's Beach. Otherwise, it's been big. Southern Point Breaks tomorrow uh, are going to be working uh, with a big southerly swell and the southerly southwesterly winds. So Point Break, right-hander central tomorrow. Thank you, Gav. Apologies, too, for some earlier audio issues. We're leaving you tonight with something pretty positive, a win for social media star Molly the Magpie and his supporters. I've certainly been following him. A reunion with his family is now on the cards. The Queensland Premier announcing they've hatched a plan to get him home, possibly within days. He might be Queensland's most beloved bird. Molly the Magpie, who fell from a nest and was raised by a Gold Coast family where he became best buddies with their dogs, Peggy and Ruby. Social media fame followed. But that also brought the attention of wildlife authorities, who in March took Molly away. I had to make the toughest decision of my life and I handed a wild bird to be in captivity. Because it's illegal to keep wildlife as pets. But outcry from everyday Queenslanders has brought about a breakthrough. We have identified a pathway for them to secure an appropriate permit so that Molly can be returned home. Our hearts are really happy right now. There's so many voices everywhere, voices of support, emails, phone calls, signing of petitions. We're just so overwhelmed with you know, the support for Peggy, Molly and Ruby. We really look forward to speaking with the department tomorrow to finalise a solution to bring Molly home. The Department of Environment says permits to keep wildlife are rare. And while there's no time frame for Molly to reunite with his family, the Premier's intervention means authorities are now working to get him home as soon as possible. Peggy and Ruby can hardly wait. She sits at the window waiting for Molly. She hears the make other magpies. She runs to the window. Oh, now my day's complete. Yeah, yeah common sense <laughs> prevails. Yeah, it's a oh, good story. Absolutely. That's NBN News for this Wednesday. A current affair is up next and we'll have updates throughout the evening. So, thanks for your company from all of the NBN team. Good night. Good night. Take a look inside haagen made en France, where only the best will do. Combining rich cream, luscious buttery caramel with crunchy brittle pieces. Et voilà, the ice cream of ice creams. With the Isuzu MUX, you sort it. Whether you're getting away from everybody or getting away with everybody.
Bring all your special ones. Or just leave them all behind. Options galore. Live your own way in the seven-seat Isuzu MUX. Go your own way. Australia versus the world. I'm going to smite these young ones. Some are calling it the ultimate battle for supremacy. Who's saying that? The Channel 9 ads. Start Sunday at 7 on 9. Hello, I'm Ali Langdon. Welcome to A Current Affair. Coming up, it went global, became political, but Molly the Magpie is coming home to her...